you are a real estate investor or you want to be a real estate investor and you want more funding for your deals, regardless of what your hard money lender, your banker or your broker says, then don't go anywhere. I'm getting ready to plug you into the money. Well, welcome to Real Estate Investing with Jay Connor. I'm Jay Connor, and welcome to the show. If this is your first time to the show, a special welcome to you. Uh, this is where we talk all things real estate investing, particularly we focus a lot on single family houses, uh, how to get your deals funded and how to find them, sell them fast, et cetera. And I'm having just phenomenal, phenomenal special guests here on the show with me. We not only talk about real estate investing, but we also talk about mindset and personal development. And of course, one of my phenomenal special experts and guests that's back with us again today is Chaffee Wins. So Chaffee, welcome to the show. Hey, Jay, how you doing? Doing fantastic. Uh, do we still have snow in Chicago? We have some snow, although a lot of it has melted because we had a lot of rain. Too, so. I got you. I got you. So, Chaffee, before we kick off today uh, and what we're going to be talking about today, uh, let me go ahead and tell everybody about what I just referred to, and that is getting funding for your deals without relying on hard money lenders and bankers and mortgage companies. Uh, we've got a live event coming up around the corner. It's called the Real Estate Investing Cash Flow Conference. And this is a $3,000 valued event. And everybody here on the show that's watching is going to get a huge discount, as in get to come for less than a $100 registration fee. So I'm going to give out the website. And then, Chaffee, let's give a quick little overview as to what's happening at the live event. And then we'll jump into today's um, topic. So the website right here below my finger on the screen, if you're watching on YouTube, is www.jayconner, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash money podcast. So that's jayconner, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash money podcast. Well, Chaffee, you had all the live events with me, so why would our viewers and listeners want to be coming to the upcoming live event? Well, hey, Jay, there's, I mean, too many reasons to mention on the show <laughs> why they want to come. And in a nutshell, if you're looking and thinking about getting into real estate or if you've been in real estate and you want to systemize and automate your business, um, you want to come out and check out the, the boot camp. Um, you know, what's so great about the boot camp, Jay, is not only do you talk about how to raise private money for their real estate business, you actually show people from beginning to end on how to find the deals, how to work the deals. We actually have a bus tour where you take people out to your properties, not just some random properties on the MLS, uh, where they get to see the progress, they get to meet your team members and learn how to do this business hands on. And then you show them how to automate the business as well, how to sell the property and then how to automate the business. So again, from beginning to end on how to do this real estate business. But if you've done a few deals already you, and you want to, you know, up your game, up your ante and systemize, automate, you want to be out there. If you've never done a single deal before, we cover that, how to do that. And if you even, we've had people at the last boot camp, I think we had, I think three people that have done over 300 deals and they still came to your boot camp. And all three of them still learned a lot from the boot camp and got a lot out of it. So, yeah, do we bring up a good point? I mean, we have movers and shakers come to this live event from all across the nation. So, not only is the information that you're going to learn phenomenal, and I don't know another live event like this when it comes to real estate investing, but you're going to be able to network with some pretty phenomenal people from all across the nation. And of course, you can learn valuable information from everybody that you meet. So yeah, Chaffee, uh, you're there with me at the um, at the upcoming live event. Absolutely. And another big value, folks, which we charge absolutely nothing for. It's a free bonus. You get to sit down and have one-on-one -on -one strategy sessions with Chaffee and uh, our other coaches as well. So just take a second, uh, Chaffee, and tell the folks uh, what happens in those one-on-one -on -one strategy sessions. Well, this, the strategy sessions that we have set up, first of all, I, I uh, want to thank you for offering it to the students because um, the coaches that you bring to the event that, that are there with me, 
you know, we do charge a lot one-on-one -on -one sessions and individual coaching and you're providing, you're bringing us into your event and uh, allowing us to provide these for free to those students. So it's a huge value that uh, definitely everyone should take advantage of. Yeah. And I, I want to throw this out there too, is that a lot of times these strategy sessions, people think, oh, well, they're just going to give me some sales pitch when you go there. And that's not what these sales, you know, these, these presentations, these strategy sessions are about at all. What we actually do there is we sit down with you, just you and your partner, if you have a partner or, you know, your spouse or, or, or child, if you bring them, um, whoever you're working with in the business, and we spend some time just talking about your situation, where you're at, and how we can help move you forward in your business. So any challenges that you're having, mental, any uh, mental uh, 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 walls that you're having that you are struggling to overcome, that's what we sit down and we work through. Um, Jay, you're going to provide all the nuts and the bolts and on the how-tos on how to do the real estate. And the coaches that you bring in, what we want to do is we want to help people start implementing that right away. Um, not just attending another uh, boot camp and being a uh, seminar junkie, right? Um, we want you to come to this boot camp, learn how to do this business, and uh, work with the tools and the information that you provide them so that they can go off and start doing this business successfully. That's it. All right, folks. So let's go ahead and jump in right now on today's topic. And today's topic is, and it's critical, folks, a critical piece, particularly if you're wanting to not miss out on over half the funding out there that you can get for your deals. And that is how to work with your private lenders to fund your deals by using a self-directed IRA company. So let's stop right there, Chappie. All right. Mm -hmm. So I have right now 48 private lenders that are funding our deals. Now, for our viewers and listeners, you don't need 48 private lenders. You need one or two to start out. But of these 48 private lenders that are funding our deals, and by the way, I'm not talking hard money, people. This is not hard money. This is private money doing business with individuals, okay? And if you don't know how to find these people, all that's going to be covered at the upcoming live event that we talked about. But in working with these people, they're individuals. And of my 48 private lenders, over half of them, listen carefully, over half of these people are using their retirement funds to fund our deals in our real estate investing business. And here's what's really, really important. None of them, none of them ever heard of private money or private lending prior to me telling them about it. And secondly, none of them had ever heard of using a self-directed IRA. So Chaffee, before we dive in on step-by-step, step, so folks, I've got laid out 14 steps. And I'm, I mean, it, it, it's not difficult, but I haven't left out anything whatsoever from start to finish, okay, <laughs> that we're going to cover right here on this show. Um, but Chavi, first of all, tell our viewers and listeners, what is a self-directed IRA company? So good. I, I was actually going to um, uh, have you go more into depth than that, only I can do that as well. <laughs> Uh, and so here's the thing that you got to be aware of is that you'll hear brokerage companies out there, the big boys out there, the, uh, the Scott trades, the Schwab's, the Meritrades, uh, that will claim that they have self-directed IRAs that you can transfer your funds into. In reality, what those brokerage firms do is that they take your retirement funds, your IRA funds, and they allow you to invest in stocks and mutual funds and bonds that they control or they have a relationship with. What we're talking about is only a handful of companies nationwide that will act as your custodian uh, and allow you to use your IRA funds to invest in business investments, specifically, or in, in this case, real estate. So you can actually transfer your IRA into a self-directed IRA company and will act as a custodian, allow you to take those funds and buy and sell real estate with those funds. That's it. So 
Uh, the company that I refer all of my private lenders to, um, and I mean, and, and, I've, and I've got my account there, et cetera, but the name of the company is questira.com. So Quest IRA, they're located out of Houston, Texas. Uh, they serve the entire nation, all right? And by the way, folks, you can have a private lender anywhere. Okay, your private lender just doesn't have to be in your own state. I've got private lenders in multiple states that are funding our deals, but all of my deals that I do are right here in Eastern North Carolina. And so the reason we can do that is that as individuals, we are not regulated by the commissioner of banks. So your private lenders can be anywhere, okay? And you want to establish the relationship uh, and as I say, Quest is who I use. Their, their website is questira.com. Um, they're not the biggest self-directed IRA company out there. And that's why one of the main reasons I'm with them. Their customer service is phenomenal. They don't charge any extra fee for expedited service of getting funds wired, you know, the next day once the paperwork is submitted. Um, when you send an email, they respond within an hour. And if they don't respond within an hour, a supervisor responds. So it's just their customer service is phenomenal. In fact, um, Chaffee, we had Quest at uh, my recent live event. We've got Quest uh, slated uh, to be at the next upcoming live event. So everybody, you'll be able to network and, uh, and, and get to meet the Quest people. Um, and, and again, the point I said about over half of our private lenders uh, have got their um, retirement funds and transferred them over to Quest. If you don't have this relationship with a self-directed IRA company such as Quest, then you're going to miss out on over half the funding. Um, Crystal, who's one of our uh, very successful uh, uh, platinum members, um, I was talking with her this morning. And as a matter of fact, about 40% of her private lenders are using their retirement funds by going through Quest. So, and, and I'm gonna throw out there, Jay, is that when you start, uh, when, when the, your listeners start working with you and become one of your mastermind students, you actually have a special communication channel with Quest that uh, they know that you know, you're sending your students to them and they respond even faster. So that's correct. Um, yeah, I've got, a, I've got a special email address set up that goes straight to the top three principles yep. at Quest. And so uh, in our platinum group and our mastermind group, uh, the, those students get that top level service um at no additional fees or you know no additional cost or whatever so yeah i'm glad you girl brought that up so um due to the length of the show i'm not going to be able to belabor each point but i want to go ahead and give everybody right now an overview of what are the steps from very beginning to actually getting your deal funded all right so step number one you got to establish the relationship with a self-directed IRA representative so that when you have a new private lender, you've got somebody to introduce them to, all right? Um, I also recommend you go ahead and get some materials or marketing materials from Quest or whatever self-directed IRA company that you're doing business with. But you contact them, obviously, come to a live event, you'll get to network with them. But if you can't come to the live event, you know, call them up, all right? Go to their website and tell the self-directed IRA company that you want to establish a relationship with someone that you can refer all of your new private lenders to do business with. All right. And so they're going to be more than willing to, you know, get this relationship set up to where you can refer new people. Step number two, when you have a private lender that has retirement funds, uh, and by the way, um, I've got private lenders that have not retired from their current job yet, and they've got funds or they had funds in the retirement 
um, account where their company, you know, had a plan administrator set up and they have the 401ks and et cetera. Well, you can ask your private lender to contact their, um, their plan administrator where they have their retirement funds, even if they haven't retired yet. And here's the exact phrase that you want to recommend they use. They get the plan administrator on the phone and they say, do you have an in-service rollover program? That's the phrase, an in-service rollover program, which means you can, they can tax-free, penalty-free, roll over their funds to a self-directed IRA company while they're still employed there. So they may not be able to run, roll over all the funds, but they could do a portion of the funds. So when you have a new private lender that's ready to get on board and, and, and work with you, you can either offer a three-way conference call introduction, or you can get the permission for your representative at request to give them a call and walk them through the process of what's involved of getting their funds transferred over so they can start loaning you money to do your deals. Now, uh, when I was talking with Crystal this morning, what she does when she has a new lender is she'll do a set up a, a, a conference call appointment with the Quest rep her new private lender and herself do the introduction and then she hangs up, she goes away and she's done the handoff, if you will. And then, you know, they have their conversation. So the first thing that the rep is going to go over with your private lender is what's involved in getting their account opened and funded by transferring funds over from an existing retirement account. Now, Chaffee, I get this question quite often, and that is, can a new private lender just open up a self-directed IRA account and just start from fresh and contribute, it in, in, contribute into it and do deals with you? The reality is that's not going to happen starting from scratch because now you're talking contributions per year. Right. And there's, a, there's a cap on that that's right now probably less than $15,000 per year. So this strategy works when you have someone that already has a retirement account that's got funding in it of some size that you could use for either purchasing a property or for at least, you know, rehabbing the property. That makes sense, Chavi? It does. Now, it doesn't mean that if you don't have anything that you shouldn't start, right? I mean, you can start, you can start contributions, max out your contributions. It might take you a few years to get enough in there to uh, do something with. Um, and, and so that's still an option. It's just, as you said, though, it's, it's really geared towards somebody that already has an IRA or a 401k that can roll it over into a self-directed IRA. And then just take a lump sum of money to invest in real estate or to do rehabs for real estate. Exactly. Now, on this conversation or during this conversation that your new private lender will have with the uh, Quest rep, um, they will go over and offer to not offer, but here's the way the process works. Your new private lender will need to sign a form, a document that authorizes Quest to act on your private lender's behalf that will give them the authority to then contact and talk with the wherever their retirement funds are currently, all right? And then Quest will take the reins and do the heavy lifting of getting the funds transferred from where your where the current funds are over to Quest. This time frame normally takes realistically depending on where the funds are coming from, four to six weeks. So here's an important piece of advice. Don't have a house under contract or a real estate deal under contract, and you're looking to use retirement funds from an individual, and they haven't even funded their account at Quest yet. Okay. So as you've heard me teach before, the money comes first, right? So we're going to focus on getting the money lined up and then we're not going to worry about missing out on a deal, you know, when we're making an offer. So, as I said, during that conversation, 
the uh, Quest rep will get your private lender to sign the authorization. Then they'll go, you know, get the tra get the funds transferred over. Again, taking four to six weeks. Anything you want to say on that, Chavi? Yeah, and I, I just want to add that, you know, having a three-way call with your rep is critical uh, in the sense of it, it uh, gives your private lender another sense of comfort that you're doing things professionally, that you're working with professional companies, um, that you're actually following a, a process and a system versus just kind of winging it versus, you know, send me your money, give me your money kind of deal. So, you know, it, it just adds to your business professionality by having this three-way call, connecting it, and allowing Quest to really take over the process and automate the whole process for them. Yeah, and that's a great point, Chad, because what you're doing by doing that three-way phone call is you're leveraging your credibility. You're yep. leveraging your credibility by being tied into this professional organization that had to jump through hoops years ago just to get approved by the IRS to be able to even offer this service. So um, I'm glad you endorsed the conference call. I, I prefer the conference call uh, for that very reason versus just asking permission of the private lender or your Quest rep uh, to give them a call. So we've got this little gap in time between getting your private lender introduced to Quest and their account getting funded. Uh, if the private lender's uh, current uh, home of their funds is dragging their feet, then you may need to ask your private lender to contact the plan administrator where their firm's funds currently are and ask, you know, what's the hold up, you know, when are you gonna get, you know, my funds transferred, et cetera. But often is the case, uh, they won't need to do that. So now let's move to, all right, the private lender's account is funded, all right, at Quest. Now, what I just went over, you're only gonna have to do one time per lender that's using retirement funds. All that that we just talked about, that's a, once the account is funded, now you're just gonna do deals, right? So the account's funded, go get a deal ASAP, all right? Private money is like bananas. If you don't consume it quickly, it will go rotten on you and disappear. Ask me how I know. So you want to put that in your private lender's funds. You want to deploy those funds right away. Now, when I say go find a deal, you find a deal uh, now. You got the deal. What I'm going to say next is crucial. Here it is. When you have the deal, you come, you call up your private lender. Here's what you don't do. You don't call up your private lender and give them all this information about the deal and ask them if they want to do the deal. Oh, my lands. Of course they want to do the deal. They, they told you, I mean, they've transferred their funds to their retirement account. You know, they've signed the documents. They've, they've bought into the program. So here's the deal. <laughs> no pun intended. The deal is you call up your private lender. I got good news. Here's what you tell them. I got good news. I got a deal ready to, to uh, you know, to put your money to work for you. All right. And here's what you tell them. You tell them the geographical area where the, where the property is located, for me, I mean, don't tell them a street address. They could care less what the street address is. So I got a house over in Newport, or I got a house in Moorhead, or I got a house in Beaufort, I got a house in Havelock, whatever. And uh, we got closing is scheduled for whenever, seven days from now, 10 days from now, whenever it is. Closing is scheduled. Um, and so we need to get the funds wired uh, you know, two days prior to closing, et cetera. And that's it. They could care less what the after repaired value is. They could care. I mean, they're ready to go, right? So here's an overall perspective I want you to keep in mind when talking and doing business with your private lenders. Don't confuse them. Don't tell them a bunch of information they could care less about. Keep it simple. And I don't want my private lenders to have to do anything except sit back, do nothing, and watch their account grow on their computer. 
Okay. So up until uh, getting their account funded, they really only had to do three things. One, you reviewed your program with them. Two, you introduced them to the rep at Quest. Three, they signed a document letting Quest do the work. Now it's time to do a deal. So you call them up, you do the conversation I just went over, and now what do they got to do? Here's what they got to do. A direction of investment has got to be filled out. It's a Quest direction of investment. So pretty much no matter which self funded IRA company your private lender is doing business with, there's got to be a direction of investment filled out, which that's it's exactly what it sounds. It is your private lender signing a document, the direction of investment, giving Quest the authority to process that deal and wire the funds to your closing agent, to your real estate attorney. Let me tell you what you don't want to do. Don't ask your private lender to fill out the direction of investment. Okay, remember keeping it simple. So here's what you do do. Here's what you do do, Chaffee, all right? Is you get your rep on the phone. No, you don't do that. Don't do that yet. Back up, back up. First, we got to get a note and a mortgage, right? We got to get a note and a mortgage. So I've got this simple little one-page email template, uh, 12 points, fill in the blanks. Who's the borrower? Who's the lender? What's the interest rate? What's the frequency of payments? How much is the payment? What's the term of the note? Okay. You fill out this little form that's going to give your real estate attorney, your closing agent, all the information that they need to prepare your closing documents, which are the promissory note and the mortgage. You send that to the real estate attorney by email. This way you're not having a phone conversation of an hour on the phone with your real estate attorney telling them about your deal. You fill out this simple little email that I can provide for you and you send it to them. My attorney has my documents ready within 24 hours when I'm doing a deal. Now, what I'm going to say next is very, very important. When that, when that note and mortgage comes back to you, proof the note and the mortgage and make sure it's right. I've been using the same law firm for 15 years, and over half the time, there's some kind of little nuance that's not right. Okay, so proof it, make sure it's right. Then at that point, get your rep on the phone from Quest and say, please walk me through this direction of investment for my private lender. And they will. They've already, I mean, you tell them the note and the mortgage and they will not fill it in for you. You or somebody on your team has got to fill it in, but you fill it out. Then you send it to your private lender for them to sign it. And then they email it to Quest for them to fund the deal. Chaffee, let me catch my breath. <laughs> and so, and <laughs> so I was just going to say, just review that real quick. So people have that step by step. Right, 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 right. So you got a deal. You got a deal. Your, your, your private lender's accounts are already funded. So now you got a deal. What do you do first? You call up your private lender, give them the good news, tell them the closing date, and tell them when we're going to need to have the, the ones, the, <laughs> the funds wired, all right, for the closing. Next, after having that little conversation with the private lender, you fill out the little tiny form that gives your real estate attorney instructions on completing and creating the promissory note and the mortgage. They send it back to you to make sure it's right. Well, they send it to you, make sure it's right. You then send the note and the mortgage to your Quest rep, get them on the phone. They walk you through filling out the direction of investment. You send the direction of investment by email to your private lender. They print it out. Well, actually, they're going to have DocuSign any day now, but as of now, they have to print it out, sign it, scan it, email it back to Quest, and then Quest wires the funds to your closing agent. Boom. There you go. Boom. Bam. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Again, this sounds like a lot of stuff, but it really isn't. It's all common sense, but it's com But you got to know, of course, what's the language, who you're right. talking to. So now your deal has been funded, all right? So then what do you do? 
you close the deal. And then of course you rinse and repeat. So that private lender's money is gonna stay in play, all right, on that particular deal that's been funded. And most of the deals that I do are interest only, all right? And we're either gonna be paying monthly, quarterly, semi-annual, et cetera. So, so Jay, does the private lender get the promissory note and the mortgage or just the self-directed IRA? Yeah, excellent. So it's the self-directed IRA. So your private lender actually reviews. See, that's a good question, Jabby. Quest requires the private lender to sign the and date the promissory note and the mortgage, not because there's a place for them to sign. There's no place for the lender to sign a promissory note. I'm doing all the signing, but I'm doing the promising. But they just still want to have that private lender signature and date on the mortgage and on the note set with the direction of investment. That way, Quest knows that the private lender has seen the documentation that they are directing the investment for. Then, after the closing, the original note and the mortgage is then mailed by the real estate attorney or whoever your closing agent is directly to Quest. Uh, for the benefit of your private lender, or they call it the account holder's name, all right, for the benefit of your private lender. But Quest holds the documents. Awesome. Uh, so then, as I said, your deal's done, you, you've closed the deal, and now when the property cashes out, then the private lender's account at Quest will get all the principal back, along with any unpaid accrued interest. And so, as again, as I just said, that sounds like a lot of steps, but it really isn't. Uh, but I just boiled it down to where we just, you know, didn't leave anything out whatsoever. Chaffee, that's the end of that story. Closing, com closing comments on working well, with you know, I, I just want to reiterate that it sounds like a lot of steps and in reality, you know, you just went through all the steps and you're you're working with Quest and you're working with your real estate attorney to do everything for you. So, you know, you're just, you know, the the com the composer, right? Just directing yeah. people to yeah. do things. I'm the and, orchestra director. And, you know, the work's being done by the, the professionals that you're working with. So once you understand those steps that you just laid out, then it's just a matter of directing and you follow through the steps and, and that's it. So it's not really complicated. Uh, so, so don't get overwhelmed, you know, by listening to all these steps and everything, because really you're not doing a lot. You're, you're telling your attorney and, and quest and they're going to take care of everything for you. Exactly. And, you know, at the live event, I have a whole session on what I just went over. Okay. Yeah. So we even slow it down even further and, you know, uh, you know, dive down even deeper, but, um, but we've, we've covered it. I mean, really. Of course, the live event, you'll see the documents, you'll see the documents, you know, you'll have, you know, everything that you need right there in front of you. And Quest will be there as well, so that you can ask questions of Quest as well. Exactly, exactly. Um, so, Chaffee, I mean, that's it in a nutshell on how I work with Quest and, uh, and how my students work with Quest. And, um, hey, I appreciate you being here on the show with me to... Um, Make sure I get all this clarified, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so anyway, folks, uh, by the way, folks, uh, wow. Uh, the show here, the podcast is like blowing up with our downloads and our subscribers. So if you're watching on YouTube, be sure and subscribe so you don't miss out on any more, uh, you know, any of the content. I'm having like Chavi, phenomenal guests and experts come on here. Um, Below the video, if you're watching um, on YouTube, you can comment, you can ask any questions, we'll get your questions answered. Um, and if you're uh, watching or rather listening on iTunes, uh, be sure to subscribe and rate and review. Uh, really appreciate your feedback. So with that, folks, thank you for joining in for another show. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority. And from now until the next show, here's to taking your real estate investing business to the next level. Thank you, Chaffee. Bye for now.